first hit her. And finally remember, did he hit in the closet when he was scared? So he went to the closet, he opened the door, and here was Danny with his knees pulled up to his chest, shivering. And he goes, Danny, what on earth happened? He went, Tommy, we're in big trouble this time. God's missing and they think we did it. In our world today, I can imagine that a lot of times we ask, where is God? And it is a question we ask, isn't it, when something happens, especially to someone close to us, something bad, something we can't explain. Why, God, is this happening? And where are you? And I can imagine for some in this world, it can feel like God is indeed missing in action. What with all of the earthquakes and fires and volcanoes that are erupting and wars and homeless people and people suffering from cancer and heart disease or chronic pain are just my aching back. Where is God? And why is it all happening? In Matthew 24, verse 3, Jesus tells us that we'll always have wars and rumors of war. In Mark 14, verse 7, he tells us that we will always have the poor then Paul gives us another glance at it in a different way. In Philippians 3, verse 8, he writes, I considered everything a loss because he had traded everything for the knowledge of Christ. Well, about now you might be thinking I'm going to speak about bucking up and hanging in, but I'm not. My message today is really simple. It's one that you can acknowledge that God is with you, and as the saying goes, he's with you always that he does live in your heart, and he is as near as bowing your head in prayer and asking him to show up, asking that you will see him when he does and know that his Holy Spirit comforts you even through all of the tough stuff, the sickness, the loss, the fears thrown at us in this world. Recently, our session has designated this year as a year of prayer. Now, we did that to recognize the fact that we're on the brink of celebrating 200 years of worship and service here. Just imagine all of the hymns, all of the sermons, prayers, and miracles this church has seen. Now, I know that all of us would pray that more would join our family and fellowship right here, and we should. But in this 200th year, we have said, let's pause and acknowledge what God has done right here right on this corner of 10th and State Street for 200 years in Bowling Green, Kentucky. All those baptisms, all those weddings, funerals, the wars this place has seen, worship services, and be thankful for God's presence with us and his deliverance of us to this time. I, for one, cannot think of a more meaningful way to celebrate our Lord and 200 years of worship and service than in prayer and thanksgiving. It is our demonstration of outward faith and obedience, our real perseverance, and acknowledgement that God is present and here. In Matthew 29, verse 20, Jesus tells us, Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you, and be sure of this, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. So today, let's rephrase the question. From where is God to where are you and where am I? You see, the presence of God really does amount to his teaching that I mentioned a moment ago from Matthew. Observe all of these commandments I've given you, and I'm with you. And isn't that the rub for most of us? God didn't promise us to always have a bed of roses. He promised instead an abundant life. Now, we'd like to think that means one free of pain and bills and troubles. But really, the bills are our own doing. And often our lifestyle choices wind up being a large part of our pain or that awful genetic pool we got born into. But even in suffering, we can still have what God promised, an abundant life. One of peace, contentment, and the knowledge that God is always with us but for our acknowledgement of his presence. It seems today we just feel entitled to 
answers to everything, every problem, every woe is me we might encounter. And on top of it, we feel like they all ought to be just a Google search away. The problem is, our faith doesn't work like that. It's in those things not seen, even those things not knowable now, but with the understanding that one day we will all, all will be revealed to each of us in God's appointed time for us knowing. So faith is really built more on trust. Trust in the promises of God, in the simple knowledge and belief that he really truly is here with us. It is what has brought this church through 200 years and to you to where you are right now today. So the good word today is not that God isn't present and accountable, but often we aren't. Now you've made a good start today, and so have I, just by showing up. That is an act of faith, just as I said in the beginning. The better news is that you can take that faith with you today and all of this week and every day. God promised to be with you now and every minute of our lives. So we can choose to acknowledge that with obedience and prayer and thanksgiving in the bad and the good, in the losses of life, and in all of life's celebrations. Would you bow in prayer with me? Our Father in heaven, thank you for this church, for your guidance of it now for almost 200 years, for its heritage of worship and service. This morning we are reminded that you are with us, and we offer our praise to you and ask your blessing on each of us that we might carry our worship forward each day of this week in our thankfulness, in our obedience, and in our service to others. In Jesus' name. As we remain standing, affirm our faith together using the words printed from the Confession of 1967. Already God's reign is present as a ferment in the world, stirring human hope and preparing the world to receive ultimate judgment and redemption. With an urgency born of this hope, the Church applies itself to present tasks and strives for a better world. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus.
to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Friends in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the church and the world. For this nation and its leaders, may they be led by your spirit to work for the good of all the people. May we all work together to serve and care for each other, showing love as you commanded. Bring peace to areas torn by war and strife. For our neighbors in need, for those struggling with sorrow or illness, for those burdened with grief, we lift our prayers. We pray for those around us, on our right and on our left, so that no one will leave this holy place without the gift of prayer. Let us do that now. our prayers, God of power, and through the ministry of your Son, free us from the grip of the tomb, that we may desire you as the fullness of life, and proclaim your saving deeds to all the world. And let us pray together as we have been taught by your Son, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yesterday, our youth built a miniature golf hole at the Soki Marketplace in support of Euspiritus. Euspiritus was formerly known to us as Bellwood. Today, Euspiritus concentrates on the support of children in foster homes and helping older children transition to independent living. The mini golf was a way to have some fun while making Euspiritus more visible in the Bowling Green community. We are glad when our youth can lead us in service. It is as servants that we come before God with our tithes and our offerings.
gracious God, thank you for the bounty that you show us that we can share with one another and with the world. We pray that you would multiply these gifts for the good of each other and for those who need it, that we may truly be the light to the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please join me in our responsive benediction. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord be kind and gracious. We go in peace to serve the Lord. We go forth into the world rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>